A theme park with dinosaurs, an underground fighting club for office workers, and a man whose entire life is a reality TV show. This is the power of a good concept. The power to make your audience say, why didn't I think of that? And immediately buy a ticket to watch your movie. While well-established writers can get by by solely relying on their name to sell their next story, an amateur writer's secret weapon for recognition is their concept. A good concept costs nothing and can open so many doors. A good concept demands immediate attention. And yet, so many writers fail at their story concept. When done wrong, story concepts are unengaging, shallow, or overly complicated. And this can not only scare audiences away from watching a movie, but it can also sour the entire story. In The Anatomy of Story, John Truby writes, What you choose to write is far more important than any decision you make about how to write it. Character, plot, theme, symbol, it all comes out of this story idea. If you fail at the premise, nothing else will help. If the building's foundation is flawed, no amount of work on the floors above will make the building stable. At first, this might sound harsh. We can all agree that execution is highly important in storytelling, and saying that it all boils down to concept can sound misguided. However, what Truby is getting at is that without a truly captivating premise, no one will have the interest to pick up your story. Without a hooky or engaging concept, no one will actually read your execution, no matter how amazing it may be. In this video, I want to guide you through a simple and practical process for how you can create a strong, original concept which demands your audience's attention. Let's begin. If you look up how to find a movie idea, you might come up with many well-intentioned but often unpractical pieces of advice. You may hear people say, be original, or ask yourself, what if? None of this advice is wrong, but none offers a clear-cut guide or practical steps one can use to create a concept. So, to understand concept, it is helpful to look at what stories are about. In this channel, we repeatedly stated that the core of storytelling is the two conflicting philosophical or moral beliefs that the story analyzes. Thus, it only makes sense that a story's concept should be a natural extension of the philosophical conflict. Therefore, concept is philosophical conflict externalized. This is the crux of understanding what a story concept should be. Philosophical conflict and concept are two sides of the same coin. While one is abstract, the other one is physical. While one side is the moral elements we think of when we watch a movie, the other one is what we see on the screen. Philosophical conflict and concept are like yin and yang. This means that your story concept is there more than just to wow whoever reads your logline. Your story concept does not live and die on a movie poster. Instead, your concept is the playing field on which you will explore your philosophical conflict. How do we do this? If we were to break this down into a simple step-by-step -step procedure, it would look like this. Step one, be clear about the two beliefs in conflict that the story tackles. Step two, externalize each belief, creating two very distinct and seemingly incompatible external elements. Step three, combine these two external elements by weaving what they have in common and what sets them apart. Let's go through each step using the example of a classic high concept movie, Jurassic Park. Step one, be clear about the two beliefs in conflict that the story tackles. The writer of Jurassic Park, Michael Christian, wanted to debate whether the technological progress in the late 80s was in fact as good as the media wanted to portray it. He wanted to investigate whether 
human beings' aspiration for advancements might have tempted us to go beyond what nature intended, making us play God. Because of this, Jurassic Park deals with a philosophical conflict of progress versus nature. Step two, externalize each belief, creating two very distinct and seemingly incompatible external elements. Taking the beliefs of progress and nature, Jurassic Park externalizes each belief the following way. On the one hand, progress is externalized using a state-of-the-art theme park with high-end technology and cutting-edge scientific discoveries. On the other hand, nature is externalized through dinosaurs, the most untamable beasts that have roamed the Earth. Theme parks and real-life dinosaurs are seemingly incompatible elements, which creates a strong contrast. Next, we must weave them together. Step 3. Combine these two external elements by weaving what they have in common and what sets them apart. On the one hand, dinosaurs are animals. Human beings are known for keeping animals for entertainment in the form of theme park attractions. Zoos, circuses, aquatic parks, etc. Hence, we can connect theme parks and dinosaurs by having a theme park where dinosaurs are the main attraction, as a stand-in for exotic animals. If this were possible, this would be a believable way to connect these seemingly distinct external elements. On the other hand, we must find what sets these elements apart. The obvious element is that dinosaurs are extinct. A living dinosaur theme park would require to genetically recreate these prehistoric beasts. This is where the idea of progress versus nature comes back. Maybe someone created technology so advanced that it can bring extinct animals back to life. Just because one can create dinosaurs for entertainment doesn't mean they should. The story should explore the dangers of bringing these beasts to reality. The result? By following these three steps, we end up with a unique concept that combines two external elements in a way that supports the story's philosophical conflict. When invited to a remote theme park whose main attractions are genetically restored dinosaurs, a group of archaeologists must escape it when a power failure sets the beasts loose. We combined two external elements that no one would have thought of putting together while allowing us to explore our philosophical conflict. Let's look at another example, Fight Club. Step 1. Be clear about the two beliefs in conflict the story tackles. Chuck Palahniuk wanted to explore themes of consumerism in late 20th century America, and how the capitalistic legacy of the previous generation negatively impacted the new generation at the time. Hence, Fight Club deals with the philosophical conflict of corporate life versus rebellion against the status quo. Step 2. Externalize each belief, creating two very distinct and seemingly incompatible external elements. On one hand, Fight Club takes the beliefs in favor of corporate life and externalizes them through emasculated, highly caffeinated, white-collar workers. These are men who are comfortable in their desk jobs in nice apartments, but deeply frustrated with the meaningless of all of it. On the other hand, Fight Club externalizes the idea of rebelling against the status quo through an underground fighting club. Unlike office jobs, underground fighting is brutal, masculine, and disruptive. Underground fighting and office workers are two seemingly incompatible elements. Step 3. Combine these two external elements by weaving what they have in common and what sets them apart. On the one hand, the contrast is clear. Office workers are not physically, mentally, or professionally equipped for one-on-one -on -one combat. This means that they will have to undergo psychological training as well as potentially putting their jobs and lives on the line. On the other hand, even though office workers are not equipped to fight, their resentment and frustration lend themselves perfectly for fuel for underground fighting. The underground fighting club can be these office workers' therapy. The result? Frustrated with corporate emasculation, white-collar workers created a therapeutic underground fighting club which might put their lives in danger when it spirals out of control. See how the simple combination of two elements that hold philosophical weight 
is enough to create something new. This is a more practical way to come up with original ideas than trying to be original or just asking yourself what if. To paraphrase Arthur Kostler in his book, The Art of Creation, something cannot be created from nothing. Creation does not come from thin air, but is a conscious act where pre-existing ideas are selected and combined or shuffled in a unique way. This allows for previously hidden similarities or connections to be revealed. When this is done with very similar things, the new creation can be even more impressive as it is unexpected. And if you look at movies with memorable concepts, most of the times, you'll realize that they are a simple combination of two distinct and seemingly incompatible external elements. Not only that, but underneath each of these two external elements lies one of the two philosophical beliefs that the story explores. Limiting yourself to only two elements ensures simplicity and clarity. One thing worth noting is that you don't necessarily have to start with philosophical conflicts to create the external elements of your concept. You can start with an interesting combination of external elements and then attach appropriate philosophical beliefs to them. You can perform the procedure backwards. There's no problem with that. But what writers must deliver is a final concept that combines unique philosophical conflicts through a unique externalization of two elements. How you reach that is mostly up to you. Today, you have learned that concept is philosophical conflict externalized. To build a unique concept, we can follow three simple steps. Step one, be clear about the two beliefs in conflict that the story tackles. Step two, externalize each belief, creating two very distinct and seemingly incompatible external elements. Step three, combine these two external elements by weaving what they have in common and what sets them apart. When developing a concept, remember that concept is philosophical conflict externalized and focus on A plus B. Nail these two elements externally and philosophically. In future videos, we will discuss how to implement your concept on every page of your story, as well as the potential pitfalls of high concepts that writers often fall into. And if you're interested in fixing your screenplay with a top development team, click the link below this video to work with us.